Hi, I'm Seamless. I'm like off of the side of something, but this is the 53rd 75k tutorial. And this one was requested by Tommy Mo, and it is from the song Automaton by Nathan. N-A-T-E-N. And it sounds, well, the original sound anyway, it sounds like this. This is what I got. Yeah. So, I actually tried really hard to make this one a macro, macro control, but it didn't work out. And also, let's actually go back to the original sound so we can look at some stuff. So, in the sound, the thing I'm doing is pretty much this thing here. I'm not doing the rhythm. I didn't get the notes right. I just kind of put stuff down. Don't worry about that. But this, I'm pointing this out because there's actually just, just a lot of things that you probably thought were that bass, but I don't think are that bass. For example, this sound. That's how that happens there. I'm fairly certain it's a separate thing. It could have been from that thing, but I don't think it's the same thing. Um, and then uh, there's another version like this. Like this seems like part of it. And it kind of it kind of confused me. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm starting to realize. Oh, I totally could have made this macro because I I I I included other sounds automation in where I tried to go with it, which is why I separated the controls into act, its own automation as opposed to having a macro control. Yeah. Anyway, this began its life as a Cedrus. And uh, the funny thing about this citrus is almost nothing is happening. It's actually just a lot of filter activity, <laughs> but the actual main sound is that. So, because the first thing I thought to myself, okay, I gotta make something squelchy, and then I gotta filter it a bunch. So I gotta make something squelchy, and I was just, I was just so, I just think, like, uh, squelchy FM. What am I gonna do? So I just FM to every single oscillator in a row. <laughs> They're all sine waves. Some of them were different pitches, and that was actually a late addition to the sound because even without the pitches, that didn't sound too squelchy. But notice that when I move the 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 sort of cascading FM around. Definitely is like it gets there kind of like that and the reason why moving around it doesn't sound squelchy But other parts do is because of the phase of the position of it. So like if I uh, this we can see how it's out of phase and You can see how different positions they give you different levels of squelchiness Different levels of squeezy kind of sound and like the levels that I chose here were just purely arbitrary just I just move them around until they eventually got to where I wanted them to be and uh, but point being with the phase thing is that any one position kind of loses its appeal. So if you change the pitch, that means it's essentially going to travel in a phase over time. And of course, now I changed everything, so I have to. And you get, you know, that kind of thing. Um, this, this little bit out is actually just there to be a layer on top of these, but these two are just doing that kind of crap and that these are two different band passes oh crap one of them has mod x on um on the high which isn't doing anything okay well um never mind so it's fine so i'm automating the actual cutoff directly on both the filters and they're just kind of mid-rangey resonance um band pass filters they're not they're not so crazy in their own right you can kind of see the effect of what's happening in there. There's also a low pass filter on here. We'll get to that later. Get to that later. Um, and as far as where I went with that, I just kind of moved them around. Although the one thing that's important is that this main guy kind of always goes up and down on the duration of whatever note I'm on. It. I tried to do it on the, the, the smaller chunk there, but yeah. And then right at the end, I put the resonance, or rather the bandpass, really high, which is up where uh, these guys has kind of happened. And just as like a kind of, we well, could do that too if you want to, but that wouldn't necessarily be the thing that made that sound if you did that. That's still a different sound. But if you want that kind of feeling, that's you know what, what you could do. Um, so then, uh, so then distortion, and then super lab monitors. So that's all well and good. And then the uh, low pass. And also some va varying EQ. I, gen I generally tend not to mix uh, mixing EQ with sound design EQ, which is the I'm just using it's a, fil it's a filter. I just have a filter, but I didn't want to make another EQ, so I just put a, put the actual mixing in there with it because it actually does still work. 
It's mostly just an organization thing. Now, I have two reverbs. I have one before the distortion and one after the distortion, and this was a cool trick I, I did, and by that I mean something I did 100% on accident that ended up being pretty cool. Which happens is that I put the distortion before the EQ, but because of this shape I'm doing on the Wave Shaper, where this bit is down here, this is, main, this, is, this, is, this is essentially acting as a distorted gate, a distortion gate, where things that are this level of, of loudness, which is to say very quiet, don't get put out there, but then when it gets pushed up high enough, it gets put out. This is essentially saying that before, like in the middle where there's no other uh, levels to kind of bring it up there, the reverb by itself isn't loud enough to get pushed out. So that is doing weird things to another distortion, which kind of gives it a nice, nice little... Uh, effect and then the regular reverb on, on top of that and maybe a little bit less of that neat that's sort of the basic idea uh, it's um a bit more specific with like the actual position positions of the filters and whatever you might want to throw a notch in there that kind of, kind of work and then of course the the actual post eq and perfect but Really, really, what the, the whole thing of this is is just sculpture sound and EQ, sculpture FM. I did the I did the uh, this crazy cascading FM to make the sculpture happen here, but like this would be actually be a lot easier in something like um, Serum, more massive, where you're able to use utilize FM as well as particular wavetable processing like the bend plus and minus or the asymmetrical mode in uh, warp mode inside Serum or just straight up direct FM uh, on, on either of those options. It'll be, be, it'll, be, it'll be different, but this is pretty simple where I'm just kind of running all of them together and they're all sine waves and not a lot more else is happening. Yeah, so this FLP will be available in the description of this video. And once again, I forgot to say at the beginning of the video that if you would like to make a request, please do so in the Reddit thread. Link in the description of this video. Requests made anywhere else will be ignored. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All that good stuff. And as usual, have a nice day.